Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, I am uh, Céline Villa. I'm um, a bioengineer and I'm working at the National Geographic Institute uh, of Belgium. Um, and today I will present uh, the results of a teamwork um, where we try to make most out of, out of the metadata of uh, Inspire um, by describing um, and making them more findable, uh, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, what we also call uh, the ferrization process. Um, so actually, we uh, made a federal DKDP profile, and we also uh, suggest an uh, Inspire mapping to that uh, DKET uh, profile. I don't know what to add here. Um, so, I will first uh, tell uh, more about the context in which we work, um, and you will better understand also the goals of the project, and then we will dive into the development, the specification, um, and you will also under understand that uh, this project is not finished yet, so there is ongoing and future work. But we will first talk uh, about the context, so uh, yeah, Belgium is a federal state with uh, three official languages and three regions, and uh, about the metadata uh, management, about geospatial metadata, uh, we have uh, yeah, a bottom-up approach where you have um, local metadata portals that are harvested by a higher level portal, and in Belgium you have four portals on the same uh, level. You have the three uh, regional portals of Flanders, Wallonia, and Brussels. And you have also uh, the portal of, on the federal level. Uh, I'm working on that federal level. Um, the National Geographic Institute is uh, responsible for maintaining uh, geo.be. The four portals are directly harvested by the European uh, Inspired Geo Portal. And in parallel to that, you have the um, open data portal uh, of uh, the European data, um, but it doesn't directly harvest data of the um, uh, regional and federal uh, portals. There is a national portal in between, uh, data.gov.be. Um, when you look into more detail to the two uh, portals, you have the Inspire Geo portal, which, is, um, um, which only contains geospatial teams. And in parallel, you have the data.europe.eu, uh, which, um, based on the idea of the semantic web, you have a much more uh, ecosystems going, uh, coming together, like the statistical, the institutional, also the geographical uh, data. Um, and there, and they describe their metadata um, by using the de facto standard uh, DGDP. Um, and the, the Inspire world actually is, has been uh, disconnected from the semantic uh, web. So the Inspire world is um, based on uh, ISO norms. So to be compliant to Inspire, you need to be compliant to the ISO norms. Um, there is also an Inspire validator being created to check for compliancy. So you see there is a lot of work being done um, in that Inspire directive. Um, but actually, all the metadata elements, so the richness that you find in the Inspire um, directive, is not reflected in the TKTP standard. But by describing the, uh, the data, the geographical data in DKDP, um, we are more findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable among all the other data sets that, are, um, that exist. So that's where the um, concept of uh, ferrization starts. Um, the concept is we um, extend the DKDP AP, uh, standard um, by um, adding attributes so that we can make an, a semantic mapping between the ISO to uh, the DKDP standard. Um, and we want to go further than that, where we um, make from that semantic mapping a technical mapping so that we incorporate the semantic mapping into a tool where every metadata publisher can directly um, 
convert ISO to uh, the DGET standard. And uh, our metadata is in uh, geo network, so the tool has to be uh, related to uh, geo network. So the goal of the project was to create a profile and also to uh, suggest a mapping. The profile, the idea was to have on federal level a consensus on the RDF representation, but we also want to have a relevant and uh, generic um, profile. So we based on norms, and because also we have some expertise in metadata management in the Inspire world, we also want to add that uh, expertise in the profile by, making, um, by having a ma an efficient management of the metadata. Um, then, for the mapping, the idea was to enable sharing the Inspire metadata across sector. Also, when a publisher wants to, um, to publish metadata, it just needs to do it once, and then it's automatically converted to another uh, standard. And uh, by making that, we have control also on which the, um, metadata is kept into uh, the new standard. So we avoid information loss of the Inspire metadata. So the development, uh, we, um, the project was carry out, carried out by four federal uh, administrations. Um, and our, um, we presented our reflections and uh, we discussed also uh, in different working groups that already exist in Belgium, like the federal working group on ge uh, geometadata. And we also discussed with uh, the regional authorities that also thinking about the same um, idea of making a uh, mapping and so on. Um, yeah, we based on norms for the profile, so we looked into the DKTP version 2, uh, also in GeoDKTP and in StatDKTP, and everything has been documented, so the profile and the mapping are documented on uh, GitHub, and we try to improve uh, the profile uh, through uh, remarks and suggestions in the, uh, the, in the issue tab. So that's the whole UML metadata model, but uh, that's a lot of information. We'll just start uh, simple. So in a DKDP profile, uh, you have a, a DKID catalog um, that contains data sets and data services. Um, in the perspective of Inspire, data service always serves a data set, so you can instantiate um, the, the class data set uh, from the data service class. A data set is also accessible, um, so you instantiate the class distribution um, to uh, have your data accessible. Uh, okay. Uh, we also, in our profile, defined two different instantiation of the same class. Uh, for example, when um, a catalog is part of a bigger catalog, you don't need to um, instantiate all the same metadata elements uh, just to uh, avoid infinite instantiation of uh, a class. Uh, we also define the catalog record class as a class that contains uh, the information about reference metadata. Uh, so when we map from ISO to DCAT, we put the um, information about the ISO uh, reference file in that class. Then um, about, um, we think it would be great to um, uh, use versioning directly in distribution. So we, um, by, when you want to version a new version of your data set, uh, you instantiate a new uh, class distribution to be sure that your data set always stays the same. Um, so you, uh, if you want to speak about a new version, you only uh, have to fill in uh, the DCT temporal uh, attribute. And then in our profile, we also added uh, some attributes like uh, the representation type and uh, the license uh, that are intrinsically related to the data set in this perspective of Inspire. Um, we also have to deal with uh, multilingualism because of the three official languages and we want also to um, uh, publish in English. Uh, when you have a multilingual string, it's easy. You just have to specify the language for each translation. But um, when you have a multilingual URL, we instantiate the technical element RDF description. 
so that you can um, instantiate, uh, fill in the DCT language to uh, specify your URL um, language. Uh, also in our profile, uh, we uh, specified uh, the thesaurus to use when you uh, use the instantiate, uh, when you instantiate a SCOS concept. Um, for DCAT team, uh, we also use a specific Belgian thesaurus um, because it, it has one or two uh, more teams than the one, uh, the, uh, the European thesaurus. Um, and then to fill in the DCAT distribution uh, class, uh, we use uh, the Atom feed. Uh, the Atom feed is so, uh, the download service uh, because there are some um, uh, elements that are good, well structured in the Atom feed that you cannot find in the metadata reference uh, file of the data set or the service. So for example, the system projection in blue uh, is really in that tag uh, described. Um, and then we also want uh, a tool, so to convert Inspire to DCAT in GeoNetwork version four. So we forked a microservice that is available on GitHub. Uh, it's a microservice that runs uh, as standalone and we made some upgrades. So the XSLT file is now in version two. Um, it fits our mapping, and uh, we can convert one or more Inspire files or the complete catalog. Uh, and that's uh, maybe not so clear. Uh, it's just uh, an example. So you have on geo.be um, the, the metadata file, and it extracts information of the XML file that you see just uh, uh, on the right. And then you, in the, um, in the URL, you see the metadata identifier. You use that same metadata identifier to uh, run the microservice and obtain uh, a DCAT AP um, filled in standard. So uh, about ongoing and future work. So this project is not finished. Uh, about uh, profile, uh, some federal authorities are creating Python scripts to create directly um, a DCAD AP um, out of the Python script. Um, there are some are working on, uh, as a, at output, they have DCAD XML, other have a DCAD RDF. And uh, we also want to improve our uh, profile based on the reported issues uh, on uh, GitHub. And then about the mapping and the conversion tool, um, we need to document it, make it available through uh, GitHub. We know also that the microservice um, can convert to other formats than just DCAT, so it could be very nice to also look at the other formats. Uh, that's uh, all the links that we uh, that I used in uh, the PowerPoint. So the uh, geo portal of the Belgian federal institutions, the federal profile and the mapping out GitHub, the microservice that we forked from GitHub, and the microservice confirmed in the mapping will be available soon on GitHub. Um, and this uh, project has been made possible thanks to the great collaboration of uh, four federal uh, authorities. And uh, the persons um, actively involved in this project are uh, listed here. So Benoit from the finance, Bart from uh, BOSA, Marianne Ryuri from the economy, Gael and I from the National Geographic Institute, and Mathieu from Jim that updated our uh, microservice. So um, thanks.